The season's gone full circle as we've reached the end of the first week. But just because it's the end of the first week doesn't mean there's not more anime to watch. And after the influx yesterday gave us, we got four more new shows to look at. One of which I was highly anticipating, and the rest of them took me a bit by surprise. But what did I think of them? Well, keep watching and I'll just let you know. And let me know in the comments what you think of them as well, because I do want to know that. Because, as ever, this is a 2020 winter anime preview from a different perspective. Sometimes comedy can be found in the most obscure places. Never more has that been true than when watching Science Fell in Love, so I tried to prove it. A love comedy anime where the main characters are both scientists. You see, Shinya and Ayame both work in some kind of science place. No one actually explained what they're doing. They both work in computers and are both, and are both serious science people. And one day, after their usual starting work routine of talking down about each other, Ayame suddenly declares to him that she thinks she may have fallen in love with him. Now that would be the start of any kind of remote relation in most workplaces when the two of them clearly have feelings for each other, but not in this one. Because you see, Shinya and Ayame are both scientists, and as any good scientist will tell you, you don't know something's true until you've scientifically proven it. And that will apparently include love. So these two weirdos go about trying to prove their love to each other, not in some kind of way of doing some foul deed to prove that you love your beauty, actually doing physical science. Statistical analysis, pie charts, bar charts, line charts, sample sizes, random variables, there's all manner of different nuances in there which I'm sad to say I do recognise a lot of them from my, my time in college doing maths. But it's in that bizarreness that this comedy really shines because Science Fell in Love is very much a bizarre comedy. It takes things to an absurd degree and the moment you think it can't get any weirder suddenly they make it even weirder. These two people clearly love each other, but they are too proud about their sciences to admit it without first proving it. If one thing's true about love, you can't prove it. I didn't really know what to expect going into Science Fell in Love. I hadn't heard much about it. It's one of those bizarre shows which is having all episodes at the same time in Japan, but we're getting it in weird three episode chunks, and it's not short episodes either. The first three episodes went live on Crunchyroll at the same time, and in Japan, all this entire series went live on Amazon. Why I didn't do it over here, I have no idea, but we said we got three episodes, so that's all good enough. And it is good enough because this show is kind of funny. It's wacky, bizarro funny. It's worth watching. The characters are attractive. The plot line, while absurd, is interesting to watch. And I'll give us a few more episodes at least. Good thing we're all airing already over at Crunchyroll. I'll preemptively go out there and say, I'm going to like this one. Namely because it's a certain scientific railgun, third series or season T. I imagine T stands for third, given that S was second season, which probably stood for second. And I don't really have to go into too much description about telling you what railgun is. Even if you're not some railgun, you've probably heard my reviews a few seasons back of a certain scientific accelerator, or even before that, certain magical index season three. This is from the same family. Railgun and accelerator both spun off from index. And Railgun was the one which spun off first, and it, by, in all honesty, the best of a bunch. A certain type of thing, Railgun, as the title may suggest, focuses on Mikoto Misaka, the Railgun, one of the strongest espers in Academy City. And rather than focusing on the strongest guy with a big attitude problem, or the weakest guy with a super powerful power which is actually more powerful than people want it to be, Mikoto Misaka is a really interesting character to watch. He's got that humility as well as that sense of justice, while being sort of weak in places as well. She's actually real interesting to watch. And that's really helped by the fact she's there with her three friends. Of course you've got Kuroko, who's been in the other ones as well, the big sister loving teleporter who will do anything to get her arms around Makoto. Literally she probably would do anything. But more exclusively to Railgun, I mean I've been in Index a little bit technically, is Uharu and Ruko Satan. Uharu is Kuroko's partner in Judgment, but whereas Kuroko is a lot more action orientated, Uharu is more science orientated. She's more analytical, she does tech things. She's the one standing behind him in the offices with a computer working out how to do things while Kuroko's out there doing it. And from the same school as Uharu, you've got Ruko Sarton, a level 0 esper who pairs with him. 
Now, she's not powerless. She does technically have a power. It's shown in some of the earlier Ray of Gun series, especially during the level up her arc. But you don't really get to see it because as a level zero, she doesn't really have any real power over it. But she's there to be the normal girl. Although, calling Ruka Sartan normal is wrong. You see, Sartan is very much a action first, freak and later person. She's all about making sure people are friends and and, in, and shows that in the weirdest ways, like flipping up the skirts of Uriharu, much to her annoyance and our entertainment. I mean, we don't see anything. I mean, Index and Railgun aren't exactly fan service shows most of the time. But she's still there, pushing the right buttons, being fun, being friendly, and just being a good egg to be around. And of course, this being a third season, there's a whole lot of history here. We've had some of the big arcs in the past, most notably the Sisters Noise arc, which was last season, season two. This time we come to a festival arc, which I won't go into too much detail about, because I will be honest, I have read the manga. I do know what's going to happen, mostly. I've changed some bits in the, in the anime, which I'm okay with, to be honest. Makes it interesting. But it's an interesting one, because we're going to learn a lot more about one of the most enigmatic characters in the Mail Gun series so far. And that is the rather interesting looking middle school student, Misaki Shokuho, who really does not look like a middle school student. It's important to try and remember that she is actually a middle school student despite how she looks. See, Misaki is Mikoto's rival. They're both level 5 espers with very different powers. Whereas Mikoto is very much more forward with her lightning and electro master powers. Misaki has a power of mind manipulation. She's got a remote control which can control what everybody does. Overpowered if you ask me, but. There's like, there are defences. For example, I don't think we should be able to use it on Accelerator because she, he can change all vectors. She can't use it on Mikoto because, well, she's got electromagnetic waves blocking her signals. Probably couldn't use it on Toma because he's got the level zero superpowers. But she uses it on pretty much everybody else to do her bidding for her. She's very much a queen bee, but she's there because she wants to be there. If she didn't want to be there, she could just hide into non-existence and people would not bother her because she could just control what they do anyway. And the fireworks you're going to fly between those two will be spectacular. Because they have not only different powers, but hugely contrasting personalities. And I'm excited to see where this one goes in the anime. Like I say, I do know more about the manga, but we'll see how it goes. A certain scientific railgun T is also airing over at Crunchyroll. Now I know a talker and animal show. We've had too many of those already so far this season. And not just that, this is a Nobunaga anime as well, which fills up another cliche box straight away. But Oda Cinema Nobunaga is very much different to the classic Nobunaga anime. Since rather than being a historical drama or a, an isekai teleported in past anime, this is a Nobunaga teleported into a present time anime, except it's reincarnated as a dog. Yep, this is a comedy anime which declares itself as a one of a kind samurai general reincarnated as a canine comedy. Yeah, I just read that down there because it looks so crazy I thought I'd say it. And this is all about absurd comedy as well, buzzword of a day, you think. Because Oda Cinema Nobunaga is about Nobunaga learning to live as a dog. But still having a pride of Nobunaga. And of course, it can't be a Nobunaga anime without loads of other generals who have also been reincarnated as dogs. And the comedy which comes about from these historical figures being reincarnated as dogs is very much about do you know the character? Do you know their history? Then laugh as they make fun about them as dogs. I think anyone who watches anime knows something about Nobunaga and the warring states here of Japan. You can't avoid it watching anime, to be honest. But without that knowledge, this anime is going to fall flat because it's all character-based comedy over characters which you need to know about. I think that's a weak point of Cinema Nobunaga. I mean, it's fun. It, I enjoyed it. Would I go back and watch more? No. I've pretty much seen all this show's got to offer in the first episode. But was it a bad show? No. I enjoyed it, like I said. Would I enjoy it more if it was cute girls? To be honest, probably not, actually. I mean, I'd, I'd appreciate it more visually. But again, it would just be the same show, just with cute girls. Actually, as a second thought, maybe. If you want to decide for yourself, Oda Cinema Nobunaga is airing over at Crunchyroll. Smile Down in One Way is one of those anime which really oozes style when you look at the promo art for it. I mean, you'd hope so, given the fact that the premise of it, but it has to do with a fashion model, because Smile Down in One Way is about a girl who really wants to be a fashion model in the during the Paris Fashion Week. Very specialist thing there, but I suppose, in terms of fashion, Paris Fashion Week is the number one Thing you want to do. Growing up she wants to be a model, takes every single chance she can get to improve herself, make herself look beautiful. Uh, she's promised a job with her father's company who runs a fashion agency. And then suddenly, one day, the horrible thing finally happens. She stops growing. Which doesn't sound horrible but 
in terms of fashion models, to be stuck as short, I mean she's not short by any means, by in Japanese standards she's tall. But 158 centimetres is too short to be a fashion model in the Paris Fashion Week apparently. Because models, tallness and yeah there's a lot of discrimination in the modelling industry. Who'd have thought today? But she's not giving up. She's energetic. She really really wants to be the next top model and doesn't want to be on some trashy TV programme to do so. So she turns up every single day to her father's agency to audition and every time she gets rejected. Feeling a bit deflated she eventually runs into a guy in his in a school who is also having a few issues on his own. So he also wants to be something special. He's a fantastic designer. He makes all the clothes for his family. His family are all girls and he has got the talent to be someone huge. Unfortunately he's also from a poor family and so whilst the family can afford to send him to college he doesn't really want to do that because that would be taking an opportunity away from his little sister who could have any opportunity she wants. She's young enough to go anywhere she wants to and he wants to let her have a chance rather than him having a choice. Whilst his elder siblings also planning to do the same thing for him. He wants to do the same thing for his little sister. And it's a crying shame because again he is really really good. Upon learning that, Chuki says to Ikuto that it's impossible for someone without an education to be a fashion designer. I mean it clicks. She's just told someone it's impossible to do something despite her trying to do something which she's been told is impossible. She's become what she hates. And so she decides to say, look, make me some clothes. So she turns up in those clothes to the next audition and it's a mic drop moment. She walks up, the auditioning room goes silent because her clothes fit her to a T, the suit her perfectly, fantastic clothes. She's a fantastic model in them. I mean, who'd have thought it? She's really attractive, the clothes are great. And she's divinely given that chance. But there's a problem because she can't exactly say, oh, I turned up with some clothes a friend made me. That'd be embarrassing. And so a photographer outside is told that, oh no, her father's fashion company made these clothes. That puts her father's fashion company in a bit of a bind as well because suddenly these really, really great clothes are appearing on magazine covers worldwide. And everyone wants to know where they get them from. Fashion model says, oh, it's from this company, but they don't sell them, what's going on? And so Ikito is also brought into a fold and he's given his chance as well. Now, Smile Down One Way is reminding me a hell of a lot of other shows of similar nature. I mean, in thinking it reminded me of something like Paradise Kiss with a fashion angle. But, in honestly, it actually reminds me more of Skip Beat. Not so much the manic girl unleashing her evil spirits on the guy she used to love, but the passion behind the industry. Starting out to try and be the best you can in an industry which is fighting against you. I mean, I don't think in any way Chuka's is going to end up wearing a hot pink jumpsuit. But I think you'd totally rock that style. And if there's any more shows like Skip Beat out there, I'm all for watching it because I bloody love that show. I just wish I'd finished making the anime rather than just stopping in the middle of a storyline. Mutter, mutter, mutter. But I digress. Smile Down One Way. It's airing over Funimation and it's worth checking out. Well, this was certainly a very positive day, wasn't it? I expected I'd like one of these shows at least. But to enjoy all four, including that dog one, was a bit surprising. Or a dog one I'm probably not going to watch more of going forward. But what did you think of them? Let me know in the comments, and join me next time when I look at the next four. Until then, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.